What is that? Oh, no, it's moving. Welcome to the realm of the unknown, where the veil between the living and the dead is thin. Join us as we venture into the darkest corners of the world. Prepare yourself for heart-pounding encounters, spine-tingling stories, and the unexplained. Dare to join us, if you have the courage. What's that? Welcome to the journey, and to the unknown, as we enter the most haunted places in the world. Okay, we're back for another video exploring haunted LA. Let's get started. To start off the tour today, we're here on Olvera Street, one of the oldest parts of Los Angeles. By day, this street is like a quaint little Mexico, but by night, it has a darker side. Not only has there been countless stories of ghost sightings, but many of the vendors claim to have been cursed by witches. This is a sandstone trough used for feeding crushed acorns to livestock in 1897. Ooh. So as you can see behind us, we actually have La Golandrina, which is not only one of the oldest restaurants in Los Angeles, but in fact one of the oldest buildings located here in Olvera Street. Before becoming a restaurant, La Golandrina was originally a brothel. It was built in 1850, known at the time as the Pelancholy House. It stands as the first and oldest brick building in LA. While currently shut down, it is supposedly haunted by La Consuela, or the mistress. Whatever spirits are here, there is certainly disruptive energy, as there have been multiple reports of objects being thrown across the restaurant. Walking a little up the street, we find another haunted spot. We are here at the Pico House, one of the oldest buildings in Los Angeles. It was built by Pio Pico, who happens to be the last governor of California before being under the United States. Pio Pico built the house as originally a hotel. This hotel actually was very popular during its heyday, housing many people and bringing many tourists into the city. But eventually, it turned into a dark area. At the location of the original Chinatown, there was a gang war fought between two rival Chinese groups during the period, resulting in 17 deaths. Now, even to this day, it is supposedly said that you can see Pio Pico himself up in some of the high windows or even from the rooftop overlooking his property in this main plaza over here. Okay, so we're going to see if we can pick up any ghost activity here. This is a pendulum, which is sometimes used for communicating with ghosts. Let's see if there's anything here right now. I'm actually getting a yes. So back and forth for me means yes. Is it Pio Pico? No. Is there some earthbound souls here right now? I'm getting there's a couple. And in fact, I feel like I'm sensing some right now. Like I feel like it's hard to describe. Almost like I'm in the middle of like a little town right now. Like there's people just performing their same daily activities. I know you guys might not be able to see this on camera, but just kind of using my psychic ability. It just kind of seems like people aren't really aware that they're dead. Like they're just kind of going about their business almost as if it was like the middle of, you know, the, the mid 1800s, late 1800s and people are just walking around going about their lives. We had to come by the next day because everything was closed. We're here at the Avila Adobe, which is the oldest house in the city of Los Angeles. The house was originally built by Francisco Avila, who was the mayor of Los Angeles Pueblo at the time when it was under Spanish rule. The house was built in 1818 and sustained damage during multiple earthquakes, one in 1870 as well as one in 1971. So now operates as a free museum. After Avila's first wife died, he actually got remarried to Encarnacion and supposedly her ghost is one of the spirits that haunts the house to this day. We're here in the office right now. I'm feeling a lot of energy in here. I'm definitely getting that there's something in here. I don't think it's Francisco Avila. It seems like it's his wife, his deceased first wife. It's the second wife. I think she's in here right now. During the Mexican-American War, the house was used as a base for American troops. I'm feeling a lot of energy right here in the bedroom. 
I think Francisco is actually in here. Oh, I don't think he likes us being in here. Like, it feels very, I don't know, almost disruptive. Like a kind of frustrated energy. We have reports of a ghost sighting. Wait, what are you doing? Definitely not eating a churro. No, go do that. Okay, I have a special treat for you guys. We are here today at the house that was featured in season one of American Horror Story, Murder House. This old mansion, known as the Rosenheim Mansion behind me, is located right here in Los Angeles. It is, in fact, haunted not only in the TV show, but also in life. There are reports of apparitions, such as a butler, and from the time it was a nunnery, there's supposedly a dead nun who rocks back and forth in one of the chairs. Currently, I don't feel any weird energy coming from the house, but we can see that it does look rather spooky, so I could see why one might want to use it for filming on a TV show. Heading over to Hollywood, we went by one of the best bars to get food at. We are here at Bordner's, the famous restaurant from I Love Lucy. So far, I don't really sense anything too spooky going on, but the food is pretty good. Elizabeth Short, known as the Black Dahlia, frequented the bar, supposedly drinking her final drink at the bar before being murdered. It was also a well-known hangout for gangsters in the 1940s and 50s, with multiple being killed nearby the bar. But two members of the bar also passed away, one of which, Al, supposedly still haunts the bar. The other, one of the owners, Kurt Richter, died on Christmas Eve in 1997. We're here to check out the horror exhibit at the Wax Museum. Whitney Houston. Hollywood's Wax Museum has a couple of ghost stories. The main one is the apparition of a woman praying in front of the Last Supper exhibit. Although today you can't find the exhibit anymore as it was sold off in 2009, but it makes you wonder if the ghost still lingers around the halls. Many of the supposed sightings come from the form of photos in which people see strange images or colors popping up in the pictures. But one story does come from a reporter from the National Enquirer who locked himself in the museum overnight to see whether if it was haunted or not. And by the time morning came around, he was waiting at the door to be let out, looking rather pale and horrified. Another story is of a teenager who passed away that really enjoyed the Chamber of Horrors exhibit. But the list goes on as many stories of ghosts have popped up over the years. And can we blame them? Honestly, many of these wax figures seem like they might come to life at any moment. Next up, we have the Hotel Cecil. Which is famous not only for being the inspiration for the hotel season of American Horror Story, but also infamous for the 16 supposed deaths that have all occurred here. Most famously, Elizabeth Lamb was found dead in the water tank, which sparked many questions after a video of her went viral on the internet of her last appearance in which she was acting weird in the hotel elevator. Two serial killers, Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterweger, stayed here. Many people that have stayed at the hotel claim that the hotel has a very dark energy and even a bit of an erratic energy. Perhaps the hotel has actually driven some people mad or even to kill. The killer after me! And the killer before you. The last place on our list is the abandoned zoo. Oh. What the f is that? I don't know, it's moving. Is that a ghost? 
Or it might just be a mountain lion. Mm. Oh, let's go. Mm. Okay, we just saw some sort of animal. I'm not sure what it was, but there was definitely some lights reflecting off of its eyes. I'm assuming it's not a ghost animal. It could be, but more than likely it's probably an actual animal that lives over here somewhere. We are here at the site of the old Los Angeles Zoo in Griffith Park. The zoo was built in 1912, but unfortunately shut down in 1965 as Los Angeles built a new zoo. What's important for us is that many have found that there are still the ghosts of animals that once lived here and passed away. While we're inside of this exhibit, I'm actually sensing what feels like maybe like a lion or something. Like I almost feel like I hear like the echo of like a roaring sound. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. And leave a comment down below to let me know where you want me to visit next time to check out some of the most haunted places in the world.